Welcome back to Inside Sports. I'm Bill McCaffrey, and our special guest is Vicki Brick. And I'm sure most of you have seen Vicki, maybe not playing basketball all the time at the University of Maryland like she used to, but in that great advertisement where she's jumping around and throwing bricks at the camera. It's a good thing she didn't bring one today or she'd bounce one off my head, I'll tell you. <laughs> Vicki, it's great seeing you again. And you were on the show many years ago when you came down here with Brenda Fries. Yeah, I appreciate you having me back. It's hard to believe it's been, oh, last time I was in a Terps uniform was 2004. It seemed like just the other day I was a freshman there. <laughs> That's right. Jeez. Been a long time in 2004. Yeah. Was I still around then? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about a little bit about your history with the Terps, but also about the job that you're doing and how did you get into this? Because I see around on that television ad jumping around all the time and I... Yeah. I, well, we, I kind of just fell into the, the family business when I was growing up and even in college. I really wanted nothing to do with my parents or the gyms or the clubs. When I got finished playing basketball at Maryland, I had the opportunity to play over in Australia for a bit. So I lived over there for a year and a half and got my master's in international communications and thought I was going to want to do some sort of career in broadcasting. Um, and when I returned back to the States, Coach Freeze was fortunate, you know, I was fortunate enough that she got me a gig doing some uh, color commentating for the women's games, streamlined through, through the radio, on the radio. And I enjoyed calling the games, but I realized sports were kind of my escape. I didn't know if I wanted to really make that my job. So at the same time while I was calling some of the, the games, my parents were getting ready to open up a new facility, health club facility in Reisterstown, Maryland. So they said, hey, they asked me, they're like, do you want to work for us? I know we, we, know, we know you don't really have a job right now. You're going to need to pay your bills. I was kind of iffy about it. And they said, look, well, at least go through our sales process. We have a pretty in-depth sales process, regardless of whether you stay with our company or move on to something else. The ability to sell and what you learn from our training will be something that you'll be able to carry with you for the rest of your life. So I thought, what the heck, let me try it out, see if I like it. Well, I went through the training, sold memberships at a pre-sale site. So we were trying to sign up new members for the new club we were opening and absolutely fell in love with it. I had no idea I would enjoy it. And I think one of the reasons I loved it so much was because I could wake up and go to work. And when I woke up in the morning, I would have the same butterflies in my stomach as I used to have when I was playing sports. And it was amazing that I could still get motivated and get that adrenaline rush from selling. It's almost like it was a game and they made it very goal oriented and production based. So you have to wake up every day and perform and bring it every day at work. And I was like, wow, this is very similar to playing sports, basketball at a very high level. Every day you wake up, you earn your spot, you earn your playing time, you earn your keep. Each day is a new day. And I feel very fortunate and lucky to have fallen in love with work. And it, it really feels like a game to me. Well, everybody that I talk to has fallen in love with you in those commercials. I mean, <laughs> they say, Vicki Brick, yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's been 30 years in the making. My parents or used to be the only ones with the speaking part, and every once in a while, my brother and I would be in the background doing some you know, activity. And finally, I'm like, Mom, Dad, you got to get me a speaking part. That's right. <laughs> and um, I, they kind of, in their mind, kind of planned, plan on transitioning the transition between my brother and myself as well because my brother's involved in the business and my parents know that they're not going to be able to do it forever and we brand ourselves at Brick Bodies as the accessible experts so it's always been my parents representing the brand and they knew it was just a matter of time before they started weaning myself into making you know getting me involved in the commercials as well. Is his name Victor? No his name's Jonathan. Oh I was <laughs> name... just figuring that you know, that his name might be Victor because I know that's your dad's name. Yeah, I'm Victoria. I'm a Victoria Lynn. My mom, my dad's name is Victor. My mom's name is Lynn. Now, granted, my dad told me I, my dad was named after his grandmother, Victoria. So that's who I was named ah. after. And my brother is Jonathan Anthony, named after our two grandfathers. Oh, that's yeah. great. And it's a great family. But I know you've got it also beside the brick places. You have another one uh, Limbrooks. Yep. Right? So we have five co ed brick bodies locations, and then we have two women's only in the Baltimore area. And we've just, it's actually worked out very well where we found a, a niche with the women's only clubs, and it's a full service facility. So there's group exercise classes, personal trainers, childcare. Um, 
and of course the machines and the equipment, um, Pilates, that kind of stuff. So women really enjoy it. It's a smaller footprint, so it's maybe um, 15 to 18,000 square feet. And they've been very successful, and, and women kind of like going into a gym, not to worry about the guys gawking at them and all the testosterone flying around. So. Oh, man. My mom and dad had a great vision when they started. They, I think our first women's club was opened maybe 10, 10 plus years ago. Wow. Wow. So it's been a long time business. Yep. But had, mostly in the Baltimore area, huh? Yeah, we're just in Baltimore County right now. My um, parents opened their first one 27 years ago. And it's kind of a funny story. My dad was a gym teacher, worked for the, the rec department. My mom was a nurse at Shock Trauma. And my dad answered an ad in the paper um, that said something about teaching classes. A uh, instructor wanted for um, athletic classes or aerobic classes. So my dad thought, all right, great. Well, I'm a gym teacher. I can teach classes. So my dad showed up the class with cones, jump ropes, all these athletic uh, tools and everything, thinking he's going to have them run sprints and do circuit training. And he walked into a room full of women in leotards, tights, and leg warmers. And the very first class, everyone's, the women are hitting each other with the jump ropes, bump into each other. And he started thinking, he's like, well, wait a second. My wife, Lynn, is a nurse, but she's also a dance major at Towson University. Let me get her in here and try to teach the women. And the very first class my mother had ever that the very first class my, mo my mother ever took was the one that she taught. <laughs> so my dad caught her up, got her in there to teach the next class. She really didn't have any idea what she was doing, kind of just winged it. And then before she knew it, she was teaching 20 classes a week. And then an opportunity came about for them to buy their very first site, Pedonia Fitness Center. They borrowed some money, and 27 years later, here we are with seven clubs in the Baltimore area. Wow. Any chance of ever getting a club over in the Washington area? Uh, or Prince George's not, County area? Possibly. We're kind of busy securing securing the Baltimore area with, with our Brick Bodies brand. But my parents actually invested in a, um, a budget club called Planet Fitness. So they bought the franchising rights to seven counties in... And you got a county in Anne Arundel County. Not Anne Arundel, but we have a county. I think we have PG County and Montgomery County. Are you sure? I thought... I think my wife belongs to. There is, well, there might be Planet Fitnesses in Anne Arundel County, but it's not affiliated uh, with us. Because I, that's when, I, when you said that, I know that that's where she tells me at least that she's going two or three times a week. Yeah, and the Planet Fitness is a great model. It's, a, it's a, what we call in the industry a budget club, kind of a bare bones model. You just pay $10 a month. There's just some cardio, um, some strength training equipment. And it really fits the need for the beginner exercises or people just, that just want something basic. So we've been lucky enough to be able to open some of those sites in different areas where they're not really competing as much with, with the Brick Bodies clubs. So you keep them at arm's distance, Well, right? we try to. We, just, we try to in the ideal world. We just recently had, to, my parents just recently put in a location next to my current one, actually. They put in a Planet Fitness right next to my club um, to because there was an open site and they wanted to basically secure the high ground and make sure no competitors came into the area. So it actually works as a, it was a good business move. It's definitely an adjustment period at my location because now they, they literally opened up a, less than a mile away from us. Wow. So it's forcing us, it's fo forcing us at the, at the brick bodies to get better. In business, you find ways you currently have to reinvent yourself and adapt because if you don't change in the competitive marketplace, you'll become extinct. So it's definitely been a challenge, but my team's rocking and they're, they're all up for the challenge. And at the, as a general manager of the Brick Bodies in Reichstown, I run it, I almost feel like I'm coaching. I run it very similar to a sports team. And you motivate people, you set goals, you set expectations, you hold them accountable to those standards and you reward for good performance. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, do you recruit any of the players that you ever played with for the gyms? Well, we de one of our interview questions is definitely, um, we d ask everyone if they've ever played on a sports team. We definitely look for people who are competitive. That's good. Um, because just the way a lot of the, the pay is commission-based, based on performance. And we find that athletes or people that have been in competitive environments know what it's like every day to wake up. And, and sometimes a, a, a saying I like to say with my trainers when I'm hiring them is, at, at Brick Bodies Reichstown, you eat what you kill. You, you have sole control of your success. Nothing's handed to you. Nothing's given to you. You earn it. Now, we'll provide the tools for you, but you need to be hungry. and You have to have that desire to want to be better and to love as an athlete, to love that, that rush and the competition, and it's been a lot of fun.
Well, you know, it's like how I've always said is that sports are like life. You go from the pits of despair to the zenith of joy and every stop in between. Yep. And it teaches you about life. There, I 100% agree. There's been times, there's been times at work where you, you get knocked down, you miss your goals, you're running, you, your back's against the wall, you might be $10,000 off of your budget, you got four days left in the month to try to make budget. It's like, what are you going to do? Are you going to sit there and wallow in your misery? Or are you going to rally the troops, get everyone together, call a huddle, motivate the team, and then just find a way to get it done? Well, we're, we've got to take a break, and then we're going to be back to talk a little bit more, and also, We'll talk a little bit about the Lady Terps this year. Great. We'll be right back after this message. <laughs> 